musical guests, The Breezeway! Jesse and I started taking piano lessons at age five. Our mom kind of forced us into that and we you know, may not have necessarily wanted to do that at that age. It wasn't really that fun to do on a Sunday, but it really was the gateway instrument and it got us into learning how to play guitars and drums. And they've been pushing a lot to play music since our mom played flute, and our dad played bass and guitar. And so there was always a lot of equipment around. There was always a lot of our parents' friends around that played music and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and there was a lot of support. You know, that was probably the biggest thing was that you know, they never stopped Jesse from playing drums even though maybe it was kind of rough getting started or the same thing with me. You know, having real supportive parents is probably one of the big reasons why we're still here playing today. Welcome back to the show here once again I don't know where this whole thing started, where it went But I just enough ways to fight Whoa, I think I'm losing my mind Don't believe in everything that you read I can remember, you know, a long time ago when our dad would be down there playing with his bandmates and stuff and, you know, we'd come like waltzing in there trying to play even though we couldn't play anything, you know, kind of disrupting it. But yet, like, at the same time, those musicians respected the fact that, you know, some youngins were wanting to get into music. Yeah, maybe another story would be when um, our dad was playing a gig somewhere. I'm not even exactly sure where we were at and we were young. We were, what, five or six at that point. I just remember kind of like, you know, stumbling on the stage and getting to walk out on the stage a little bit while our dad was playing. Eventually they moved us away and I had no idea what was going on, but, you know, just, I remember that, that day pretty vividly and, you know, and I always knew I wanted to be on the stage after that. Eighth or ninth grade, we played our first um, um, junior high dance and really like, you know, it was pretty rough, but, you know, people really seemed to enjoy it and, you know, hearing people clap and just seeing that we were making people have a good time. That was the motivation really for me to keep going. 
and then like on like some different bars started booking us to play you know <clears throat> wanting to pay us to play and we were almost like well maybe we should just keep going with this you know and, yeah performing the first time was definitely nerve-wracking you know we'd always be completely nervous up there knowing that most people in the crowd watching us were like older maybe even better musicians than us at the time but still you know it was a good feeling to be able to play out there and being 14 playing in a bar I guess we found inspiration to write music from in a lot of different avenues. Everything from, you know, real life events, real life experiences, anything from love to hate to and anything in between. And, you know, people use catchphrases. A lot of times we hear someone using a catchphrase and we'll be like, oh, maybe we should write a song about that. You know, it's already something that's popular. We try to add a lot of positivity to our songs. You know, we want to inspire people to like the music, but we also want to put a good message out there at the same time. Yesterday is Gone, we originally wrote it for a guy over in England and he ended up not using it, but basically it's about leaving self-destructive behavior behind. It's about moving forward in life. Yeah, really, no matter what your past is, you know, you can always look back at your past and be like, all right, the past is gone, but, you know, it's not too late to change the future. It's not too late to have a good life. Sometimes it's been way too long. Sometimes you're too tired to sing along. Your song. Sometimes you just won't hit the stop. Sometimes you're tired of living by the clock, and you just want to go home. And I hope you never say another word that makes me pray. And you know this by the time that I fall.
opportunity to go play in Europe for the first time. You know, we had done some out-of-state gigs, but, you know, it just seemed so, so big at the time that, you know, being able to play over there in front of people that didn't know us, but yet, like, we're digging the music, singing the music. I remember in France, people were, like, singing back in English, and then not really being able to speak that well of English, but music's almost universal. We're currently working on a new Breezeway album, which will be our 13th album, I believe. And it's gonna be about four more months before that's finished. And I'm looking forward to that one being done. And we're also putting together a compilation CD of you know, different um, groups and bands in the Northeast Ohio, and not necessarily just Ohio, but um, anyone who writes original music, we've been trying to get the word out to send us you know, their music and we'll put in a compilation. And all the proceeds from that goes to the Christina House, which is um, for battered women down in Lisbon. That's right. I guess you can find a lot of information about our shows and releases through um, the internet, especially sites like um, social media. We got Facebook and um, YouTube is a big thing. We got a lot of videos up on YouTube and we're getting a lot of views on that lately. Reverb Nation, but yeah, but then Amazon, eMusic, iHeartRadio, CDBaby.com, and even our live shows. A lot of times we have our music available at our live shows, which we do every Tuesday. We do an acoustic jam at the side door in Salem. So if you ever want one of our CDs, just come out on a Tuesday and someone will hook you up. For past episodes and extended coverage, log on to dpvisualmedia.com.